with his mother, isn't it? And it was known publicly by the church and by the community. Because he was committing a public sin, the church knew, the community knew, the church had to take disciplinary action. And that is why Paul says, verse 2 he says, and you are, and you put verse 2 there, so that I read from this translation. This is New King James. Verse 2 says, And you are proud, should you rather have been filled with grief and have put out of your fellowship the man? And that is why you'll find in this church, if you commit a public sin, what will happen to you? We have a disciplinary action. You will be disfellowshipped. Now, is the disfellowship because you're bad? No, no, no. The disfellowship is to prove to the church members and the world that the church does not tolerate that kind of behavior. So when you are disfellowshipped, it is not the church that is doing this. In the spirit of the word of God, we have to prove to the world that we don't condone it. So if anyone here, aache kukuja sabatu, amebatizwa kanisani, lakini ya kuji church, ikifika Saturday anauza, mnaona akiuza, uza vitu huko nje, akujangi kanisa, you can't just come back and be a leader here. You get the point? You have to face disciplinary what? Let me say I become a drunkard. And then I drink for one year. Do you think I can come back here and preach? No, there is a process. Before I can come back, ndandoleo shirika as a disciplinary what? Action so that other church members may know that they cannot do that. It is not what? Allowed. And then later on when I'm repentant and, and they have seen that actually I have understood my sin, then I will be rebuffed. Why being rebaptized? I am openly declaring to the world that you dhambi ni mea so you'll have to be rebaptized. That is why when you have to be total out of the church, you may have some disciplinary action, then you are brought back again, you are rebaptized. If you left the faith and you come back again, you'll have to be rebaptized. So the baptism can happen on that basis. Point number three about rebaptism, and this is where many of us may have been rebaptized even today. This is a condition where you are experiencing the book of Romans 6 verse 2, and I want us to read that. Romans 6 verses 2. Romans 6 verse 2, the Bible says, just open it. Paul says, I think in verse 1 he says, how can, shall we continue in sin? Just, just begin from verse 1 so that we, we, we understand the flow of the verse. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase. Then he continues to say in verses 2, by no means we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Then continue verses 3, he continues to say, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Now continue to verse 4. We therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. We too may live a new life. Now I want to get you to the point you understand this. Do you know there's a point in your life where you have not done a public sin? Lakini makona na makorida umepitia kwa maisha yako, unaona ni kama we na mungu wa monani wapi? Uso kwa uso. You feel that your life is so messed up to the point that you are wondering why you are even baptized. In that scenario, you may need a what? A rebaptism to begin a new what? That is why you may find there's somebody who in their life walienda di kwa mganga. Kanisa ijui, you get. We don't know what you did. So we can't say it's a public issue. We can't say that there's a disciplinary what? Action. We don't know. But you, you do what? Unajua ulienda kwa mganga, unajua ulifanya hiki, unajua maisha yako imearibika. You feel like you don't, the church does not make sense to you. You may want to get riba. Personally, I was rebaptized. I was baptized in class 6 the first time. And the reason why I got baptized is because I was asked by my teacher to be baptized. And he said, you have to be baptized. You have to be baptized. 
Yanda ni kabatizo. But looking later on in the years, I realized that I didn't even know what the church believes. So when I came to know the truth, I told my pastor I want to be baptized, and I was rebaptized. So three issues. So those are the three reasons why we get we do rebap, rebaptism. So those who are rebaptized today, you understand why you are rebaptized? So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, you too may. Yeah, because in that burying you are opening a new page. But I want to note this: we can't keep rebaptizing you. Amen. If you are going for rebaptism, be serious. You can't get rebaptized and then next time again you are rebaptized and then next time again you are rebaptized. You need, <laughs> you need to be serious about your commitments to God. Yeah, so that you live a life that is in harmony with the will of God. Bearing in mind that I should quote a person at a time, one person at a time. What can I do in the event that I am studying person X? without necessarily informing you of her. Then coincidentally, another person studies the same person X and moves on to propose before I do. I think this is insecurity. This is insecurity. And uh, I'm hoping at the time you're studying this person like this, you are intending to get married. I don't know. What do you mean by studying? How do you understand studying someone, by the way? Maybe we can start from there. Nile, unakuja, unamuangalia kwa class, bile ameka, unasema, oh, ameka, sawa. Unakuja, after you, unawana, ako church, sawa. Is that the kind of studying I was talking about? No. I was talking about the fact that you have, no, you have no romantic attachment, but this is somebody you always meet. You get? Unamona kanisa, mkona ye lesson, probably yata mlipika pamoja lunch, hii lunch umekula leo. You get the point? Mwena mnacheka? Perhaps some of the things that are happening, you are doing together a lot, but you are watching each other. Point number two that I want you to understand here. In the event that your time is not right to propose to somebody, and that person belongs to you, even if person X proposes earlier than you, she will still be yours. Amen? As in at the end of the day, the question that I'm asking you, let me give you an example, by the way. When I proposed to my wife, <laughs> and we, were started, we just started quoting, there's a, there's a gentleman who wanted also to quote my wife. So after me, he didn't know we already started quoting. We are together. Yeah, Jodu Kueka kwa Facebook. You get the point. So, my wife was telling me that he's, uh, he was writing applications at that very moment. Do you think I was worried one bit? Do you think I was worried one bit? Anyone who can answer on my behalf? Do you think I was worried? Why? I was convicted. I had talked to God. I have talked to her parents. She, has, she knows mine. We already processed. I know she loves me. I love her. In fact, I was telling her, Asa kijana ajaribu batia. That was a, actually, that is a joke I made. That is a joke I did what? Because the fire have gone. God has been guiding me all this process. You can't be insecure when God is the one leading you through. If that person goes to person X, then probably she wasn't meant for you. We are together. And subui, don't don't be all about your type. Be about God's what? God's type for you. And that is a very important philosophy there. So don't worry about person X studying the same person. You be align your life with God. If the person was to be someone you're going to get married to, you will get married to that what? That person. We are together. 
God is infinite in power and resources. If you are on his side and it is his will, he will open the way for you. Hello, would, I would, would, would you help me to please? I was in a relationship and had gone to the extent of having premarital sex and we ended up breaking up. In future, if I am blessed with a husband, am I to disclose that I am not a virgin and how can you help me overcome the guilt over the same? That's a very important question. Now, I shared something in the morning when I was preaching that I want to reiterate. One, if you have repented about whatever you did, abortion, the marital sex, you are drunkard, whatever it is that your life has held before, God forgives all sin. Amen? Do not, do not, do not feel now you are a second class citizen in the church. You know, I met guys who can't even come here to the pulpit because of some sin that they might have done what? It is not like that. By the way, God does not hold grudges. If he forgave Mary Magdalene, he can forgive you. But you must claim the promise by faith. Amen? So, the first thing is this guilt should not be there. The guilt can only remain if you don't trust God. We are together. If he has said that as far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us, then what is worrying you? How far is the east from the west? Can you get to the east from the west? You can't. Meaning our sins are removed to that very extent. So the guilt aspect, number one here, has to do with faith. Believe you are forgiven. The Bible says, come let us reason to get Together, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them as, as white as snow. They be red as crimson, I will make them as wool. God is saying, come let us talk. I mean, I know you are messed. I know your life is like this. I know you have premarital sex. I, I know all these things in detail. But I am, I, am, I am a loving God who is capable of forgiving you. And I shared with you, by the way, if you come to a point where you want to stop premarital sex, and you come to a point you tell God I'm living a new life. Understand that he gives you a new certificate of virginity. You may not be physically a virgin, but consider yourself respectful as a virgin. Maneake ni kwamba, jitembeze ni kana kwamba, you are a what? A virgin. You know there are some people who are saying now because I had sex, when maybe at some point in high school, now at this moment, purity is not for me. So mtu yote ambaye amekuja kwa maisha yangu mimi sina haja sasa na kukua piwa it is because your life is now no 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 if you are indeed saved by grace know your worth amen know your what your worth don't become a, a rag that men can just play with and sleep with and mess with because you made a mistake no 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 even if you are bored you, you are boated treat your body as a vessel we are together on that point. Point number two that you are asking here. If I'm blessed with a husband, do I disclose to him that I am not a virgin? Now, if this issue arises during courtship and you are discussing this subject during courtship, I shared with you the other time, such disclosures should be done with wisdom and at the right time. We are together. You may be thinking that you're not, you are the only virgin here. He may also not be a what? <laughs> a virgin. But I tell most men and women, bitu kama hizi, ongeleni wakati, meulizana. Don't volunteer. We are together. Don't do what? <laughs> Don't volunteer. It will make a chinina na man and you say, you know, by the way, I have a body count of two people. By the way, if you volunteer like that, my perception of you may do what? May change. These things deal with only because you are, in case you are asked. The only things I said you must disclose are the ones that will affect the marriage. But of course, sooner or later, the two of you will want to know your sexual status. You may not have to say, but you have to come to a point where you discuss this. Because sooner or later, on the honeymoon, mtaju, Itajulikana whether you are a virgin or what? 
or not. But I believe we understand that that can be. The only point where you cannot disclose something like this is in a marriage. In the event that at some point before you knew God well, you cheated in a marriage. And then 10 years later, you are convicted of your sin. You can't sit down with your husband without him knowing. And then tell him, by the way, you know, five years ago, ABC happened. There is lack of wisdom. That marriage will come to an end. <laughs> you get my point? Unless it is something that is brought on board. So the point I want you to understand is this. There are certain sins that are between you and who? And God. This issue deal with it only when it is questioned. If the person asks you that by the way you are virgin and you are serious in the relationship, utadanganya? Yeah, just be open about it. Discuss it. Express. If you, the two of you know that you are following God, I know you will understand the issue a lot much better. So concerning forgiveness of God, of course, that one is clear that God forgives you. Is it good to quote someone abroad and the parents are aware about it? Okay. I think this question has many, many pictures. Uh, I don't know how long this courtship will last. I don't know if you've seen each other face to face. I don't know, but one thing I can, I can advise you, I may not know the particulars of this issue you're asking, but it is better you quote someone. If Let me say, you began the courtship in Kenya. Sindio? Alafu wakaenda majumi yaka? Tatu. Na narudi. But also there are dangers in this unless the two of you are engaged and you've come to a point where the two of you love God and you're committed to each other. Because most of the time, the stories Mimi I have heard of courtships where someone is abroad and someone is here, uh, most of them don't usually end so well because of that distance. But this is an issue of trust and how the two of you met each other and how the two of you love God. But it's a risk. We are together. It's a what? <laughs> it's a risk. It is like when you get married and then the first five years you are away. You are, not, you are never in the same house. There are some problems that will arise in your future marriage because of that gap. The first few years of marriage as much as possible. Sana sana mwaka wa kwanza the husband, even if you are a preacher, you should not be constantly out. It is a time for you to bond. That is why in the Bible, you are not to go to war in the first year of your what? Of your marriage. You are to spend time with your wife, understand your wife, understand your husband, so that in the event that in the future, that is a very important point. So with this issue of distant courtship, it depends on how much you trust each other, how much you already know each other, but it's a risky business. So whoever is doing it, you need God. <laughs> you need to know this person well. You need to have a good standing and trust with this person. If at all, they will come back home to you. We are together. I can't really put much on that because I don't know the two of you. I don't know how you met. Do you already know God? But it is much better if you are already engaged we are together. We are already what? You can't quote really well without a, a foundation from that distance. Is it wise to abandon what the society discern me to do as a man as far as affection is concerned? In a way, like we all come from a different societies. And to some extent, if I will be more affectionate to my partner, I, will lose my, I may lose my manhood and dignity since some affections are not privately done. I don't know what he means, but I think I understand what he means. He's saying that there are places where you should not show love to a woman, isn't it? Like affection, like like umtreat kama upendo hivi, ama nini? Is that what he's asking? I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstanding this guy. How are you understanding this question? Is it wise to abandon what society decides me to do as a man as far as affection is concerned in a way like we all come from different societies and to some extent if it will be more affectionate 
to my partner, I may lose my manhood and dignity. What does he mean? Yes? Yes. Traditional African society. So as the tradition of where it comes from. They I don't allow you. maybe a man to do some task, but they are totally for the wife. So how can he handle it? Oh, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I, there's, there's something we did in our marriage, and maybe this is the counsel I will give you by the, by the wisdom that God may grant me. What we did in the first year of our marriage was to study Adventist home. You know the book Adventist Home? The reason why we were studying it with my wife every day as our devotion was so that it may wash away my cultural stuff and wash away our cultural stuff to bring us to the mind of God regarding how we were to live. We are together. Yeah, because she's from a different culture. I am from a different culture. But to a large extent, I didn't want to be a cultural husband. I wanted to be a godly husband. We didn't want her to be a, a cultural wife. We wanted to be a godly wife. And that is why I shared with you the word of God overrides culture. So if culture says a man should not be in the kitchen, what should a godly man do? If the wife is sick. Yeah? You let her die. If culture says a man should not wash clothes, what should a godly man do? When your wife is unable to even get her head up, what do you do? You hire some, some, some nini. Some help. So you see, those, those, those are some of the questions that you need to really ask yourself. What is the role of culture? Culture is primary, but culture underlies the word of God. So if there is any culture, this man is asking, that is in harmony with the word of God, do it. We are together. If there is a culture that is not in harmony with the word of God, don't do it. Personally, where I come from, there is so much culture. Kuna culture ya mbuzi kinunuliwa siju ifai pita wapi. Siju mkikuja nyumbani, siju ya mfai kuguza nini. Siju and what happens, there, is, there are so many things. One day I was schooled on the same. Nikasema, how will I know which ones I've done and which ones I've not what? I've not done. The, the, cultural, the cultural aspect of our lives have a lot of issues. But the word of God simplifies all these problems. I would rather you stick to the word of God and live affectionately with your husband. By the way, Sister White says affection is not weakness. There are men who have been taught that to say sorry is a weakness. To support your wife is a weakness. To talk to her as an adult is a, a weakness. But is that what the word of God says? Read Adventist home, by the way. Those who are contemplating marriage, you know, summer. Adventist home. There's a chapter that deals with the duties of a husband, duties of a wife. There's a chapter that deals with that. Go check that chapter. Be the husband described there. And be the wife described on the other one. I'm told time is actually up. I want to actually see if, if there's anything in these questions that we have not answered yet. Concerning the background you told us yesterday, suppose you are a Christian partner, but their parents are non-believers. How do you go about it? I think I've answered that. Suppose you are involved yourself in cohabitation for the past three years, and now you know. Now you know. Do you, how do you go about it? You have tried to talk about the partner, but she refuses. Emotional issues. What can you do? This is a sin. What do you do with sin? You stop sinning, isn't it? Yeah. If she's a student, and maybe Anna Palipakuishi, Aongena Wasjana, or Marafikizake, <laughs> but let her move from that house and the two of you stop the sin. 
Are we together? What do you do with sin? So you stop the sin. It's a decision you make. There is no way of going about it. Akuna iti agreement mtasai na manini. It's just, this is sin. You do what? You stop the sin. Let the person move out and live a life that is in harmony with the will of God. What should come first after prayer? Introduction to parents or proposal? Did not, they not answer this. I said if, if you know the parents, you know the parents, they know you. Tell the lady about it and tell the lady that you want to share with the, pa, with the parents that you want to begin a courtship. Is it okay with her? Then you can talk to the parents. If you don't know the parents, let the, par- let the lady introduce you to the what? Let the lady introduce you. And then from there, <laughs> find some time of how you can create a bond from there. What if you do a proposal, it goes through, but parents decline? Or you do introduction to parents, that the proposal does not go through? I think it depends on the reasons. If the reasons are valid, then it must come to an end, isn't it? If the reasons are not valid, seek appeal to people of experience to help you discuss with your parent. Are we together? Yeah, I think that one I've shared about quite a lot. This is, uh, yesterday you said that you should marry people of the same faith. I am an Adventist, and if I marry a Catholic and convert her to be an Adventist, is it allowed? I think I've answered this a lot. There is no? There is no what? There is no courtship evangelism. You can't convert someone. You will fail, by the way. Don't try that. There is no romance in evangelism. Kamu nataku mubiria, mubiria kando. Sawa, sawa. Lakini usijumuisha upendo hapo ndani. Itu na mubiria ukimpenda. It won't work like that, by the way. You will fail. <laughs> Supposing the lady I'm quoting with has the full will that she will leave the faith of her church and join the Adventist faith, can I believe on this and take a step ahead? If she's doing it for you, then you are in trouble. If she's doing it for God, you are safe. Now it is up to you to identify. Is it you or God? We are together. You say that he who, has, who may not have been raised by a father may fail to grow manly and rather have some feminine characteristics. But now I wish you may expound more on the fact. I'm just saying that if you're married, if you're raised up in a single parent family, you don't know the experience of a father in a home, you are most likely to grow up not manly enough. You get. Because you, you never had a man figure in your life. But I'm not saying your case is hopeless. What I'm saying is that you may be in school, you may mingle with other men. You can learn from the word of God and the Holy Spirit. God can help you understand what it means to be a man. But in the event that this happens, ladies should be able to understand that men who are raised up in single families may be a bit different. I think the urgency of the time is really there. We, we need to just rise, we pray. So we end it. I may not be able to answer all these questions. Just rise, we pray. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the privilege we've had of sharing your word, the questions we've answered, the liberations that we've made. As we are ending this evening, we pray that may your spirit enable us to leave these things, to abide by them, and to accord them in our own lives. The questions that have not been answered yet, we pray that may your spirit guide your children into what they need to do. As we pray, dear Lord, that as we begin this week, may your will and your purpose for our lives prevail in all things. For this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you.